It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Before we get started playing Empire Make History on your living room floor, I just wanted to blather a bit about colons in game titles. I, I find myself drawn more and more to games with colons in their titles, and I just want to muse a bit as to maybe why that is. Um, and I don't really have an answer going into this blathering, which is what will make it blathering as opposed to a prepared statement. So some of the games I really enjoy are um, Origins, Colon, How We Became Human, um, what was that other one? Labyrinth, Colon, The War on Terror 2001, and that has a comma, 2001 to question mark, um, Duel of Ages, Colon, Set One World Spanner, which unfortunately has been spoiled for me because it's now all the Duel of Ages games. So I no longer am able to say Duel of Ages, Set One World Spanner. And there's something about having more, I think the colon allows for a longer title, perhaps, and that I don't know, it fills my mouth in such a way. It makes the game feel more important. Um, I think? I don't know. It, it makes it feel more unique, I guess. Like, at this game, for example, if it was just called Empire, um, if you were to run a search on games named Empire, you'd come up with tons of games. It doesn't really say anything about the game, but that added make history on your living room floor makes me know I'm talking about this game. And some reason that's worthwhile. So take note if you're going to name something, big long titles are better than little titles in my opinion. And I don't think I fully supported that, but that's still my gut feeling right now. Let's get back to play. Okay, I'm coming back to this game after a couple days and this is just a mess of cards. Uh, and I think I actually know what they all are. Some are some are face down cards, right? And some other cards and some are yeah, it's making sense to me now, but it's just, it's very messy. And we're starting off, Destructo's kind of pissed. He has this naval blockade on him, and that is going to inhibit his troop growth. So he played federal troops to kind of compensate for the two that the blockade stopped him from getting. And then he also played National Battle Cry, Destructo! And he is going to attack and try and wipe out these small annoyances. Here he has this mighty empire, and he has these two small annoyances that are just bugging him. He has um, a weasel down here and weasel up here. He'd really just like to get rid of him. Um, and then he also has Vaughn over here who placed this blockade and has this large stack right outside his second capital. He'd like that stack to go away. He'd like weasel to go away so he can have um, the new world in peace. So he's gonna try to do that now. And remember he has um, Marines so he is able, and what else does he have? He has Guerrilla Warfare, so he gets to roll that first. He'll be his Guerrilla Warfare die. He's attacking this gun space here. As I was saying, his Marines let him roll four dice to attack instead of three, and the uh, Guerrilla Warfare die is not gonna do anything. And he's going after a weasel, and I should learn and check what this face down card is before. Each attack roll against chosen space results. Ooh, okay, yeah, Weasel's gonna do this. Each attack roll against chosen space results in the loss of one unit in attacker's capital. So that's probably going to make this the only roll of the combat because this is, well, I think he, here's another place where I'm going to have to make a ruling. Destructo actually has two capitals, so I'm going to say he can choose to lose one from either. So he's going to be losing four units as a result of this unpopular war. All right, so let's see if it'll, it's worth his while. I mean, he's definitely going to be taking some units from Weasel in the process. But he's going to be losing five units himself. He's losing more than he takes. So he takes three off Weasel, loses five. He'll choose to lose two from there. So that was rough. That unpopular war really, um, I think, just peeved Destructo off even more. He had to lose a lot of units from this capital, which makes him pretty vulnerable to Vaughn. Uh, things could be changing soon. He is still going to try and attack that blockade, however. Um, and he gets four against one. I think he can only attack one of the two blockades from that space. I've just been assuming you get one attack a turn, I don't know, per space. All right, and he easily got rid of this one. That's going to make it so he gets to collect one more unit. Um, the penalty is only minus one now instead of minus two. Before I go further into Pinky's turn, I just want to show this very powerful move she's made. She played this Electronics Age card, which I'm going to rule 
that is removed from play. It let her play any number of face down cards uh, this turn. She had a large number of face down cards this turn, so let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, that's huge. Um, for comparison, you generally get, you could only play a maximum of one face down card on a given turn. So if you see, here's her current face down cards before she has played that card, we'll add them all together. And then, you know, here Junior has one, and Vaughn has one, no one else has any, and she's sitting on nine now. So that's pretty, pretty potent. Um, these are all surprise effects she can just unleash, so I think a lot of them are in response to attacks. So like that Unpopular War, for example, was a face down card. Um, so people probably are going to be leaving Pinky alone for a while. And Pinky used her second card play to place drones. Let's her attack any space from her capital. Her capital has a rather large stack, as you can see, and she's going to attack Vaughn's capital right here. She could attack any capital she wants, but the thing about Vaughn's capital is she could actually reach it. So she could attack it um, with this guy, with her capital, and then invade it from here. Um, and then she'd have another capital. Vaughn is going to reply, however, by playing Emancipation. That's going to double the units that she has in the space attack. So that could that could give her a chance of actually keeping it. Um, I don't know why you would discard it next turn. Why not just discard it now? So she's going to get three more units in there. I'm sorry, I'm more used to using my right hand, but when I film, I film with my right hand, so it a little more difficult for me to do things like open bags. Uh, she has six and she has a bunch, so it'll be a three on three. And does Pinky get any other special benefits? She does, I believe. Oh, it's armor, so that's a defensive ability. Vaughn gets politics. She's not, well, does she want to use her politics up? That's a good question. I actually think she will use her politics. She'll still use the double the double card because then she's got a hardier defense there. And then she's going to use her politics to prevent prevent any one space from attacking any one other space. So that's going to cancel out the drone attack and nothing is going to happen. Junior has an air force now right there and he's about to use it. He can send his air force from any space up to four spaces away but he's actually going to send from his air force space itself and he's sending it right here at Sonny's capital. So it's going to be a three on four battle. Sonny has no face down cards. Does Junior have any? Yeah, nothing he's going to use. So it's a three on three. Sonny gets no bonuses. No one gets any bonuses. Straight up dice rolling. Ooh. Great defensive dice. Horrible attack dice. Um, he is going to tie on one and then the units can't be killed though, so he actually doesn't lose anything. So that's just going to hit one of Sonny's guys. And then he's going to come down with his main forces uh, right at Sonny's capital there. And that is going to be another three on three straight up die roll. Oh, and propaganda. I forgot. He gets a bonus from this propaganda. The Air Force drops some leaflets down on Sonny's capital and convince one person that Junior's way of life is the better way. See if the dice agree. Doesn't look like it. Man, he is, Sonny just really wants to drag the game out, doesn't he? He lost it. All three of the the chips there. Hmm. Does he want to continue? It'd be a two on three. I don't think he does. I think he does want to reinforce down here though with these guys. Those did not attack. And then he'll also I think he might go into the Holy Land. I had him do one more roll. He skipped through the, the Holy Land and took this space. Lost a unit in the process. So Sonny just used Prohibition to get a rather large reinforcement, so he's looking much healthier now. He also played a peace conference. Um, this makes it so people have to sacrifice units in order to attack him. With the defense covered, he is going to make a counterattack against Junior, try and drive him out of Africa. All right, and this time he's going to get to reroll one die on his attack because he has 
machine guns. And does Junior have anything face down he wants to play? You may move any of your units one space. Hmm. Just one unit one space, huh? Yeah, I guess he'll move a guy from there to there. That's going to be three and three. He's just going to hope for a little bit of Sonny's luck, Junior is. And looks like he maybe got it. Nine, two, two. Oh, this five is bigger than two, though. All right, so... No, he didn't get it. Jeez. So he's going to lose three. Sonny loses one. And Sonny's going to continue to the attack. We got to reroll. Hold on. He's excited. And eight, seven, two. I think he's going to reroll the two. I'll do it now so I don't forget. Eight, seven, six. And that is going to be a crushing defeat of Junior. Junior's going to lose all three of these guys. Sonny only lost one unit through that whole thing. And he's going to... So he knows about the Air Force, so he's going to jump ahead three. He's still kind of thinned out, but he can bolster this way, bolster that way. Actually, he'll put one there. And the turn ended a little better for Junior. Uh, this was the, the roll on Sonny's attack from this space to this space. Sonny lost three guys, Junior only lost one. However, that does weaken it so that Pinky could perhaps come in and take it on her next turn if she so desires. So Vaughn led off her turn with an earthquake here. She was going for Pinky's capital. It had the most units and the earthquake can, would have been able to bring her down to one. Um, Pinky was fortunate, well, she was fortunate she had the card that let her play all those cards face down. One of those was Labor Union. Now since higher wages hurt industry, the chosen player has to put the card back in hand and loses card plays this turn. So Vaughn can play no more card plays. She does have it now though. So everyone knows that whichever space has the highest number of units is, um, is weak, is susceptible to Vaughn's earthquake. Um, let's read the quote on this. It is essential that there should be organization of labor. This is an era of organization. Capital organizes and therefore labor must organize and thus industry is damaged. Um, so Vaughn's going to have to work with that. She was hoping to really weaken um, one of her two main rivals with that earthquake, but she was unsuccessful. So Destructo's turn, even though it's sort of in the interest of one of the thorns in his side, Destructo has caused an alien invasion to descend upon Pinky's capital. This time, she was unable to counter it. What she was able to do, however, was assassinate his leader. So that's gonna make it so he's not going to get any units this turn, um, which is pretty annoying to him. But not so annoying, because he's already gonna get one less anyway. Um, so we'll see how this all plays out. Destructor just it followed up with an embargo. He gains one less unit this turn, but zero minus one is already zero. Um, that's going to keep Pinky from getting any units. We're starting to see that the two would-be kind of leaders of the game are starting to send shots at each other across the ocean, even though neither of them are in direct conflict right now. So, and neither of them are going to get units as a result, which makes me think someone else might come a rise to ascendancy. Not sure if that'll be Vaughn, but it will be someone. I forgot to mention last turn that the pirates successfully took this spot. Um, they did lose one pirate, though. Weasel's pirate. So we'll see if Destructo does anything else on his turn. And he's not going to do a whole lot. He had to shift some units around to kind of defend against the pirates. He, what he's really worried about is losing this space right here um, because then he would lose his guerrilla warfare ability, which he enjoys. He's about to employ that now because he's going to use his final, his only attack that he's going to do this turn is to take out the rest of the blockade, or that's what he hopes. So it's three on one. First he gets his guerrilla warfare die, and that doesn't do anything. And wow, the defender took him. Destructor's getting torn up. And this time he took it. So the blockade is gone. That was certainly an annoyance, though. It took him a couple turns just to get rid of it. Undeterred, Pinky plays robotics, followed by cyber terrorists. She used the, the cyber terrorists the same way as before to get rid of the... the um, Sorry, the units from 
from Vaughn's capital. Then she used the robotics to give herself units, which um, she otherwise wouldn't have been able to get. She's now going to be able to invade here. And I think she's going to put them all in. She wants to make sure she doesn't have the most units in one space, however. Right now, it looks like Vaughn has more. She is going to buttress her own. Actually, let's see. Vaughn has five there, and here she has six. So she needs to make sure she has less than six. She doesn't want a volcano to erupt. Five looks like the, the number to be. She's going to put two of these here, and I think she's good. So this is going to do a couple things. One, she she was able to take Vaughn's capital, which will be hard for Vaughn to take back. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to make Vaughn want to take another capital, which Destructo looks like a good candidate. Um, so she's able to strike back at Destructo and strike at Vaughn at the same time. And Weasel is making a press for his capital. He's seeing this as his one opportunity, and he's going to take. He played Manifest Destiny. That's going to let him re-roll. He's going to attack for, with his bombers first. Um, so it's going to be three on three. Looks like it's a minus two if he's using bombers. And good defense roll here. Hmm. Pretty decent attack roll though. His bombers might have actually paid off for the first time. I think so. He's gonna re-roll this one. That doesn't help. So he he's able to take out one of um, Destructo's forces with that. Now he's gonna attack with his main body. Actually, he has one more bomber he can attack with. I just had to do it at a different time. And it's gonna be one against two. And yeah, that one failed. So now he's attacking with his main body. Destructo, despite having all these cards, doesn't have any face down, so he can't invoke any of them. So he's just going to have to take it, and I think he's going to be losing the capital. Three against two, yeah. All right, and it looks like despite the, the small numbers, um, Destructo held out on that first wave. Weasel is undeterred, though. He smells victory. This is his one shot. Unfortunately, it's Vaughn sitting on the other side. Hmm. Another good defensive roll. Yeah. And that's going to do it for him. Um, he did take one off. Hmm. He lost two. Does he keep going or does he hold off? I think he may as well just keep going. I don't see any. I don't think. I think he's tired of being without a capital. Two on one. And he does get to take his capital back. And he's going to go all in on that. And just hope, hope that she'll leave him alone. So now he's attacking from the gun space here. Three on two. Pretty good. Pretty good chances. The only problem is, is he's going to have to deal with Vaughn, maybe. Whoops, that was a three. Yeah, he got, he got it. He got it right there. And I think he's going to go all in. Despite that, well, he really likes to have a gun space. I think you. Nah. Well, yeah. He's going to hold on to that gun space, too. Um, just in case Vaughn leaves him alone, he'll have better reinforcements next turn. Junior just finished his turn. Didn't really do a lot other than reinforce. He played a card face down and just kind of buttressed himself and evened out his forces. Um, the notable thing about his turn, however, is he drew the final four cards. I've been cycling the discards um, throughout, you know, kind of going in order 1800s, 1900s, modern future, 1800s, 1900s, modern future. He just drew the last four modern future and there's nothing in the discard pile. So, oh, except this Manifest Destiny will get there next turn. So there will be something to draw, but I think that is going to be a disadvantage for Sonny and then Vaughn because they have nothing left. Where's, we have these people with these huge honking stacks, uh, but they're limited, with certain exceptions, like Pinky's uh, exception, to one card play, a, or two card plays a turn. And they're not always able to do even that. So cards might be... Holding a lot of these card spaces might be less useful as the game continues, and I'm thinking the unit spaces seem to be more important. Sonny is really getting tired of this back and forth. He just played a card that gave him a bunch of units, then he played high ground, low ground, and he's going to take his normal units, and then he is going to attack. He, did, he hits four this turn. 
Sonny has always liked to play aggressively. One, two, I think he'll put two here as well. Maybe one more here. No, I think he'll go there. And he's going to press upwards against Junior. Junior is going to get a minus one to all die rolls, and he gets a plus one. So I, I guess I could put the card in between the two of them, uh, right? And that's one he could have held as a surprise card, but he's deciding to just use it. He's going to start with this kind of small attack here, three on three. He gets a re-roll, plus one. Junior gets a minus one. And oh, I should probably appraise myself of Junior's face-down cards. Hmm. I don't know if he wants to use this emancipation yet or not. I think he's probably expecting more. Uh, but maybe he will. Might as well use it. It's going to be three anywhere he anywhere he goes. See our discard pile is getting bigger. Um, so he will. That's going to double the units here. Let's see if he can hold off any strong advance. All right. Nine, two, one, he'll re-roll the one. Eight, that re-roll really paid off. That two becomes a three, five, or four, three, three. So we got a tie and two victories for Sonny. So Junior's already lost half of his forces there. Um, Sonny will call off the attack from that space, and he is going to continue it from this space here. If he wins the space, what does he get? He gets the Air Force ability, which is could be useful. Um, so he's coming at it from a 6 to 3. Same sorts of numbers. And 3, 7, 3, 1. So that's 6, 2, 0. Ooh, bad attack roll. 5, 5, 2. Well, he actually won in two of them. The only one he didn't win is this one, so I guess he'll roll this one again. And that's a 4. So he lost 1, 1, 2. Um, and he's going to continue the attack there. Three on one. And he definitely has it. So he's swept in. And I think he'll do something like that. He Now here's a, here's a case where it may be smarter if he held off. But I think he's feeling good about himself. And he wants to keep going. Um, so he's going to keep going against Junior. He's really kind of angry with Junior for getting so close to his capital. And he's got an 11, a 7, and a 2 against an 8, a 7, and a 1. So that's a tie. Let's see, what does he want to reroll? He wants to reroll. The 2 beats the 1. Seven is to eight. Huh. That's a tough call because he's got a tie and two victories. Does he want to risk the tie? Yeah, I think he wants to dominate. So he's going to risk the tie. And that paid off. No? Yeah, yeah, it did. So he has three victories there. And that's going to destroy Junior's forces. He's going to throw half of his in. And that's a that's that was a big turn for Sonny. And again, we're out of a discard pile. Poor Vaughn. Sonny just drew all three of the cards that were discarded. So Vaughn, unless she discards some cards, she's not going to get too many. She's only going to get to draw one anyway. After using the Pony Express, which is going to ensure her a card draw, Vaughn is going to attack from her politics space. She's going to try and take that headquarters. Um, attacking Pinky is just too risky right now with the stack of um, face down cards Pinky has. You know, even if she was happened to be successful, which the odds aren't the greatest, um, Pinky could then just turn it around, likely, given how these cards work. So, I'm going to try to snatch the victory, the spoils from Weasel, which has got to be really demoralizing. Um, if she were successful. Weasel is really trying hard though. Look at this huge roll. Whew. She got a tie and two losses. So it's gonna look like that. She loses three off that one. Um, I think she's gonna continue maybe. Yeah, because if she keeps her politics ability she would still be safe from counterattack by Destructo. I think she will keep going. Um, And 
here we have a better roll for her, that's for sure. So that's two ties and a victory. So that's going to take Weasel out of it. Um, she loses two from there, though. So she's going to... She's going to occupy with two. Let's see, one, two. Oh, those guys can't make it. Shoot. So she'll have to do that to keep her um, politics and hope her cavalry gets there in time to protect the... Um, uh, I think Destruct is going to take it next turn. I don't know, maybe not. It just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. Here we see Destructo, who is dominant, uh, flagging quite a bit. Um, Pinky's kind of in the same place. We see Sunny going back up against Junior where he was before. This game is a seesaw, and I don't know when we're going to get off this carousel of teeter-tottering carousel. Um, but... We might just have to play to um, two eliminations because I, I think it might take a while. Uh, but though maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know if like if you get to the point where you are dominating so much that it becomes impossible for things to turn around uh, against you. I don't, I don't know if there's a tipping point where even the powerful cards won't be able to, to have their little judo effect. Uh, we'll see in the next time. Empire, make history on your living room floor.